Hello everyone, it's DA here and welcome to another Dauntless Guide. Today we are going to be talking about farming items in the game. I know a lot of times when you're trying to craft something, the items are just not there and it tells you, hey, you know, you need this, you need that. So one of the first things that you want to do is that you want to go to that item that you're trying to craft, either from the armor smith or the weapon smith or the repeaters guy. You want to go over there and look at the one that has the red hue to it over your mouse or your controller across it and it will tell you where the item drops from. It will say, hey, maybe this one drops from Dire Heroics. This one drops from this type of, you know, behemoth. It will literally tell you that. Now, I know the last time in my previous guide video, some of the items were called Arcanites or different names and that has been changed. You have things such as Arcstones. So a lot of the things that I mentioned in my previous guide last year has changed, but these locations are still there. To get the best out of resource farming, it is best that you do patrols. Patrols are very important because patrols have a way of doubling and adding to the items that you have collected. And it will also give you some extra resources as well. So things that would have taken you three trips to go and get would likely take you a single trip or maybe just two in total. Now, here is the fun part. Some items will drop from dire patrols while some will drop from regular or heroic patrols or heroic missions. If the behemoth is something that you can still solo and your slayer level is a little bit higher than the threat level or your armor level and weapons is a little bit higher than that of the behemoth's requirement, then I will suggest that you solo that patrol or solo that mission. The reason I say this is because it gives you the time to go around the island and collect all the items and all the resources that you may need to craft things that you will need later on. So it is very important to do some of those lower level ones solo. It just gives you time and of course it also makes you better. If you do it in a group, chances are no one is going to wait for you to go around and they will likely just kill the behemoth before you even get enough time to farm for other stuff. So on lower threat areas, doing it solo will help you then going in groups. Now, if you are going in with friends, then you can ask them if they wouldn't mind you looking around first or walk with you to get some of the stones or some of these other reagents. In the early stages of crafting and upgrading items such as armor or weapons, you will only need to hunt behemoths for parts. However, once you start reaching levels 9 or 10 on that weapon or armor, you will have to start looking into dire and heroic hunts. This is because it is part of the requirements for that hunt. There is also an option to buy a resource booster at the store, and this is going to be a little bit somewhat important. Now, I know that can be a little bit expensive for some people, but if you combine that with the hunts that you will do, you can double your overall rewards in patrols and irregular missions for the next 30 days. So if patrol is already giving you maybe two times or three times of what you will get, if you combine this, you're literally looking like around six times of what you would have gotten if you are using this booster. Now, I know some people may call it pay to win, but it's been in almost every single free to play game. So this is one of those things that you can use to reduce the grind time. On my suggestions on this, the first one is to work on your skills and yourselves before queuing up and get cells such as medic in case someone goes down in some of these heroic missions. The second option is to look for someone to carry you. And I know that sounds ridiculous and crazy. However, let's be honest here. My first ever heroic hunt was Shroud and I was carried years ago. After that, I felt more comfortable with doing the same mission myself or going in with another group because now I know how to do it. I watched and paid attention to that person. There is no shame in being carried as long as you're also prepared and you're trying to pull your weight and be useful in some way or the other. Because a lot of times people make it seem like being carried is just this ridiculous stigma. However, if no one carries you, how are you going to know how to do it? Yes, you can watch videos on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but you're never going to know it unless you've been in there and try it yourself. 
So just make sure that you are prepared if someone is ever going to carry you. And please don't shame anyone if you end up being the one to carry someone in the future. That's just how hunting games work in general. So anyways, I hope this helps you and I hope it clarifies a lot of things. I'm trying to be very, very profound in the way I explain a lot of these things. So if you do have any further questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section. And if you are carrying people, you can also comment down below in the comment section as well. We have a lot of new slayers and because we are cross play, that even makes it a lot easier to carry people on any platform. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.